So talk to me about what testosterone optimization is all about and why there is an epidemic of testosterone deficiency. It's amazing how many men today and women, and that's a whole other subject, but have hormonal um, deficiencies due to the environment, due to what I call the war on our biological systems, um, and then also just due to being inactive, um, you know, sedentary, not getting out in the sun, not connecting with nature and all the things, again, that, you know, you write about. Um, and, and, and hence, because they have an, a, a lack of awareness, um, they just go through life by the time they hit 40, 45, 50. And, 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 and by the way, a lot of these guys now are experiencing this even in their 20s. Um, their life massively declines because, as you know, when you do not have uh, you know, at least I would say normal to, normal to, and we want to be an optimal, but normal levels of testosterone, everything declines. Physical health, body fat levels creep up, you know, you get brain cog, you get a lack of cognition. I mean, on and on it goes. And unfortunately, most men today who do seek out, you know, treatment or help, and, my, and most of the time already it's because their wives tell them, you need to go see a doctor because they're not able to get or maintain firm erections anymore. What's actually causing this? What's, what's going on? You, you talked about a war on our biological system. So what is actually responsible for why there is sort of an epidemic of testosterone deficiency? And why is it sort of happening now? Like, why aren't humans programmed to have plenty of testosterone? And, you know, what's, what's going on in the modern world that's, that's resulting in this? It's a great question. And, and, and truthfully, you know, the book, the TOT Bible. And by the way, anyone who watches your podcast today, I do this for every podcast I'm on. If they email my team, it's contact at trtrevolution.com. We'll send you a PDF of the TOT Bible absolutely free. So just send an email again, TRT, I mean, excuse me, contact at trtrevolution.com. But the question is a good one. Um, if we go back 60 to 80 years and we look at the men of the World War One, World War II, and the Korean War generation, they literally had between two and four times higher levels of natural testosterone pulsing through their bodies than men of today. And there are studies that can back that up. Um, and again, they're all quoted in my book and people can look into those. And I always mention, you know, one good study to look at, which is called the Hebrew University Study, um, which actually looked at men on all the continents. And it was like a, a 39,000 male population cohort group. Wow. Um, of where they are from a fertility standpoint. And we are seeing a, as you said already, a global deficiency and almost a collapse of fertility in men um, because of declining testosterone levels. But it's what I would assume, and again, I write about this in the books, and I obviously interview some of the top doctors and clinicians in the world about this. It's mostly due to modern day living, right? I'm wearing blue light blocking glasses right now because the light, it's being emitted from my computer screen as well as the white, you know, the high intensity lights that come down from, you know, our offices and stuff like that. And even, you know, stage lighting that I have in my background for my podcasts, um, that causes harm to our endocrine system. Um, plastic, right? Receipts, cell phones, you know, this stuff, this, you know, here's the newest Apple uh, case. This is military grade polymer high resin plastic that when it touches your cuticle, you know, is doing all kinds of things going into, again, your biological systems, you know, cross-linking. I mean, there's so many things that happen to us now in this modern commercialized age. You know, we have endocrine disrupting chemicals. You know, I always grab this book and talk about this. You know, Dr. Anthony Jay, who wrote this book, Estro Generation, every person should read this book because it's very, very horrifying to really be aware of this kind of stuff, but it's important so that you can be proactive and try to avoid some of these things. But it's impossible nearly today, um, Ori, to completely naturally optimize yourself unless you're extremely proactive. And all of these things, again, are leading to uh, what I call attack on our biological systems. And in that attack on our biological systems are endocrine systems. And by the way, this isn't just men. This is women, too, are not functioning at peak capacity. And as soon as they stop functioning at peak capacity, um, and again, it's a synergy, right? Everything is a big circle, your thyroid, your testosterone, your pancreas, insulin, all of these things, when one breaks down, it usually leads to malfunctioning at all the other areas. So it's like, you really have to be proactive by, as you and I were talking off the air, measuring your blood testosterone levels, measuring your thyroid hormone levels, measuring your A1C and your blood glucose levels, measuring all these things that are being attacked 
due to, again, modern day societal living. So real quick, can you list off some of the key signs and symptoms? That's oh yeah, my bad. So the number one symptom of a deficiency is brain fog. And most men do not know that. Most men think it's like, you know, associated with sexual dysfunction or lack of erections or something like that. Not, a cl not even close. The number one symptom and side effect of a testosterone deficiency is brain fog. And how does that present or associate? It's normally uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, the guy just wants to go home and take a nap. He has zero energy. He's just like, wow, I'm not here. What's going on with me? And then after that would be the kind of things you know about, you know, lack of energy, no, no want or, or drive to go to the gym. Um, you know, sex becomes an afterthought, lack of morning wood. Um, but that's, it's no, most men notice it cognitively. There's just a total decline by middle of the day where they have no brain function, have no energy. Like, you know, again, it's, it's mostly like, I just want to take a nap, you know? And a lot of guys, when they get really low, Ari, they're dead. I mean, literally, they don't want to wake up in the morning. They don't want to go to work. They don't want to be married. They don't want to be a father to their children. So it's, you know, I, I like to say, use that term. It's very much a soul crushing diagnosis. Um, if, if you're blessed and lucky enough to even get it diagnosed, because again, most men who do end up going to the doctor, they never even have this treated. They get put on an SSRI like Wellbutrin, um, you know, or some, there's a million other ones or, you know, Viagra or whatever. And then they just get worse because by the way, and this is sad, and I don't really talk about this a lot on um, shows, but there's now research coming out that all of the SSRIs actually lower testosterone further. Mm -hmm. So it's making it worse. Yeah. Yikes. Crazy. So obviously as far as benefits of testosterone optimization therapy, uh, it, we would expect it to undo some of those symptoms that you just mentioned. Yes. What, what are some of the key physiological mechanisms of how testosterone actually works in our bodies? I mean, it's sort of its role in building muscle and strength is obviously infamous and tied to, to steroid right. and bodybuilding and most people associate it with that, but it, it has many, many different effects on different physiological systems. Can you give just kind of a brief overview of some of the, the main effects? Yeah, it's absolutely a great question. Best question I've had in a long time. So, so testosterone today, the best doctors out there will literally tell anyone in a lecture, in a classroom setting, um, you know, even their patients that it should be frontline therapy for the number one affliction that is affecting right now men in the world, which is diabetes, which again, as you know, Ari, comes from a sh yeah, an SHITY diet, <laughs> um, a lack of control of their insulin, because again, they're eating, you know, uh, GMO food, they're eating high sugar, they're drinking a lot of alcohol, whatever, they're doing all kinds of terrible things to their body. So testosterone massively, massively improves uh, insulin sensitivity and also um, suppresses blood glucose. So again, it should be number one frontline uh, treatment for someone that has adult onset, which is again, type two diabetes mellitus. So if you're a guy and you're fat, and you have type 2 diabetes and your diet sucks and you're not active and you're not doing all these things and you go to a doctor, that literally should be the number one treatment. Um, testosterone also does a number of things um, to lower inflammation, okay? And as you know, inflammation is literally the number one, um, it's the number one reason that people end up with the diseases of aging. Vascular illness, vascular incidents like heart attacks, heart disease, obviously we've already talked about diabetes, and metabolic disorder and obesity, um, neuro, neurodegenerative disease, okay? Testosterone is now, again, I've already mentioned Dr. Mark Gordon, testosterone is now known to help mediate uh, and reduce amyloid plaque, which amyloid plaque, as you know, leads to dementia, Alzheimer's, and other uh, vas uh, vascular neurodegenerative diseases. And by the way, um, and you probably do know this now, but I mean, essentially they're calling now all the neurogenitive disorders of the brain type three diabetes, because again, it affects the same pathways. It increases cytokines, which again, the pro-inflammatory cytokines, which then attack the vascular walls and the cellular walls that are, you know, where the, the plaque and the other things that, again, the cellular gunk that lines up that causes these diseases. So there's so many amazing things that testosterone does. Um, it also obviously helps um, regenerate um, uh, bone. It improves bone mineral density. Right, like I just had this conversation with my father, who's you know anti, seventy four year old guy, ex pro athlete, totally won't take testosterone. It's illegal. It's unethical. It's immoral. You know, and and I'm like, Dad, you know, he broke his he broke his right hip and he had like a distal fracture. And I was like, Dude, there's one thing that you can do. 
okay? Besides red light, besides vibration therapy, besides blah, 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 you know, um, you could take testosterone. I mean, testosterone, there's, you know, a thousand studies out there about what it does to regenerate bone mineral density in 75-year-old and older um, geriatric patients. And again, these are people that have compromised immune systems or compromised, um, you know, biological systems from, you know, comorbidities from whatever, and it still regenerates bone. So there's a million things that testosterone does. Again, they're all you know, he heavily covered in the TOT Bible. Um, I think one of the things that I was blown away at was how potent testosterone is at suppressing inflammatory cytokines. Mm -hmm. And I have all the studies um, that were available to me when I published the book, which was in uh, February of 2018. So you know, we're almost now 17, 18 months out from there. Um, but I now have in my new books coming up, I have even more studies on inflammation. So they're just finding almost by the day now, the research is coming up to talk about how amazing testosterone is in again, mediating, um, you know, biological systems in, in a positive way. Hey there, this is Ari again. One more quick thing before you go. Just make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Energy Blueprint, and also make sure to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform, whether that's iTunes or Stitcher or anything else. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview, and I will see you again next week.